Where does, in your belief system, Jesus fit into it? Yeah, he's our savior. He's your savior. You know, just to, to comment on the father thing, you know, historically speaking, the Israelites, they will know if someone is, is righteous, they will call him a son of God. Or, or they call the God is a father. So it was a literal thing. It doesn't mean a father. It means someone that raised us. And in Arabic language, we have something very similar called Arab. Arab means someone that Arab Bani, someone that raised me. Who raised me and raised everything? The creator of everything, we believe. So, however, this term father, it caused uh, is ambiguous term. It caused confusion. So if in English language, when you say a father, mean someone who has biological son, or someone who has a stepson, or someone that you respect, you call him a father. You see? But we don't apply none of this to God. God is our creator. That's why God called Moses in Deuteronomy, Moses is my Abd. Abd means servant, my slave. He's my slave in the so stand. Do you have anything that I can understand the relationship that God has to us? Is it like, like here an artist would create a painting? Is that what we are to God? No, we are to God. We are very special to God. If we believe in Him and worship Him alone, and we believe in Islam, there is no, our relationship with God, there is no mediator between us and God. Directly. I don't have to go. I don't have to go through Prophet Muhammad. Yes, Prophet Muhammad, likewise, we believe in Moses. Jesus came to teach us how to have a direct connection with your Creator. So in Islam, we have a direct relationship with Allah. So, yeah, so I'm trying to understand what that relationship is. It is, is, is that we. What, what would we look at it that would be similar on earth? Yeah. A father, child. That I understand. No, we we, not, we are servants, and it's our Creator that we worship Him. We follow His teaching. We love Him, and we hope that he will show us mercy and forgive us. So like a dog? No, like so a dog. No, like Moses and God. When God said to Moses in the Old Testament, he said to Moses, also in Ezekiel, he said, if you do wickedness, you behold and guess you. But if you turn away from your wickedness and you do good deeds, then your God will forgive you your wickedness and will give you everlasting. Everlasting here means paradise. So to God, to get paradise, you need the good deeds. When a young boy came to Jesus in the New Testament, he said, Oh, a good master, what shall I do to inherit the kingdom of heaven? Mm -hmm. Jesus said to him, Why are you calling me good? No one good except God alone. He said, Keep the commandments of God. So Jesus is being asked, the, 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 the true Messiah is being asked by the young boy, How can I get to the everlasting place, to the kingdom of God? Jesus never said to him, Believe you're a son of God and you'll be saved. Or oh, I'm going to die for your sins. He said, keep the commandments of God. Maybe you know, what is the commandment of God that Jesus was referring to? Well, either we talk about the Ten Commandments, or we talk about that you should love God. And no, it was the Torah. It was the Torah. Okay. So. Yeah, the Torah, yeah. The commandment. It's the law. It's the law. The Torah. So the Torah, and the Torah has what? Worship God alone. Love Him. Stay away from uh, paganism. Follow His teaching. So this, the, co the connection between the servant and God according to Jesus, teach it, and Moses and the old prophets and messengers. So we don't say like a dog. It's like between God and his creation. Okay, that's what I'm saying, because like the creation, that's what I'm not under. Okay. Just like the creation, that's yeah. what I'm, because it's different, like you have a servant and a master, they're both man, right? You have that kind of a, kind of a situation. So I'm trying to understand, just in the Islam faith, Hmm. what that relationship is but it, you keep saying like it's a creator so maybe it's not something that we can understand because I can't create something no 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 I'm not saying you child no no right the, 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 the relationship between us and Allah mm -hmm. is that we follow his teaching through the prophets what, through the prophets and what the prophets yes. have taught us yeah mm -hmm. that's how we so worship. what is that connection you're talking about that Muhammad so has told me I can have the law the most important thing most is to worship God alone Allah without any partners the way he wants which only comes through this prophet. Is yes. Like yeah. Like in the Bible, out of respect, you don't have that. I'm sorry? In the Bible, you don't have that. Don't have how that, to worship? That, how to worship Allah correctly. But even though Jesus just told the, the young ruler to follow the commandments, which you said was the Torah. Yeah. Which no, is in the Bible. No, but to mention to you something very interesting, very important. As a Muslim, I don't believe everything that is in the Bible. Oh, I see. Okay. Put, put, as, as a Muslim, put, put Islam aside for, for a moment. You, what is in the Bible, we cannot trace it back to God. Why? You know why? Because Jesus spoke Aramaic, correct? Or Syriac. You know, but 
Yes. Okay, Jesus spoke to the, the, the historians differ. Hebrew? Hebrew or but Aramaic and Syriac, that time, that language was uh, widespread. That language we don't have anymore. The Bible that we have is in the Greek language, all right? Yeah. So therefore, they had to translate Jesus' teaching, okay? Do we know the translators? We don't know them. That's the first thing. If we don't know someone, can we trust them? If, we don't, if, I, if I, you don't know someone, can we trust him? You don't know him? I guess not. I guess not. So therefore, how can we trust the rights of the Bible if we don't know them? That's first. Secondly, when you come to the Bible, the earliest manuscript that we have, okay, it came 100 years after Jesus. Yes. Like Bart Ehrman, not Bart Ehrman, even the other Christian scholars uh, mentioned that you have a copy of 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 the original one. So literally someone came 100 years after the original writers, even though we don't know them very well, saying to us, Jesus said this and that. But we cannot even trace it back. How can we trust them? How can you put your salvation and you want to be connected to God to a book that you don't know who wrote it? We cannot verify it. But when it comes to Quran, the Quran is very special. Because the Quran, one of the miracles of the Quran that Allah mentioned, that He made it easy to be memorized. That if, I always mention this, if the Muslims and the Jews and the Christians, all of them decide to burn their scriptures, the only scripture will remain with us is the holy book, the Quran. Why? Because the Quran, it has been memorized by the Muslim children, not even the scholars, yeah? By the Muslim children at the age of 9 and 10, around the world. For example, all of us, we know the alphabets. A, B, C, D, E, yeah? I can write A, O, U, but tell me, no, 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 it's not A, it's A, B, C, because everyone memorized it, you understand? The Quran, the million of Muslims memorize the Quran. And the Quran has been recited even at the time of Muhammad openly in the mosques. Rather, we have Muslim scholars, they drop from the time of Muhammad to sit down in the mosque and to teach the Quran for 30 years, 40 years. A book like that will never be lost. You understand? That's why, logically speaking, if the Bible is from God, how this book was not preserved, and we know why. Allah told us why the Bible was not preserved. Because Allah put the trust to the rabbis and the priests, but they were the first people to exchange it for money, you know? But when it comes to Quran, it's being preserved perfectly. So if, logically speaking, the one that is being preserved perfectly and the teaching makes sense, it must be from the Most High. So we don't have correct teachings of Moses or Jesus? We do in Quran, not in the Bible. Okay. Yeah. For example... And those came through Muhammad? Yes. And so we, we don't have, but it's what Muhammad said that Moses and Jesus said. Yeah, and we can verify, and we can verify that Muhammad is a prophet of God because, for example, just to make something clear to you, when I say we don't have it, I'm only negating everything in the Bible is wrong. I'm not going to say that. There is some truth to it, like worship God alone. And uh, before I come to the Quran and the Prophet Muhammad, when it comes to the Bible, like I said, you come to the Old Testament, all right? The five books, the Torah, the Trinity, Genesis, Book of Numbers, Leviticus, and so on. Those books, the earliest manuscript that we have is 1,000 years after Moses. So someone came 1,000 years after Moses and he started telling us what Moses did and said. But the question we ask ourselves, who was that scribe? What was his name? Was he trustworthy? If he's a trustworthy, who did he get that information from? Because between him and Moses, 1,000 years. So now why we believe Prophet Muhammad is a true prophet and we accept because you know, God creates us with something called universal knowledge. You know, as universal knowledge, we call it universal tools. Our sound reasoning. For example, if someone tell me God is perfect all the time, he has no beginning, no end, then he tell me God died, doesn't make any sense. Because if you say God has no beginning, no end, by default, he does not die. Do you agree with that? Does not yeah, sure. Yeah, it's true. If I say to you, God is perfect in everything, He has a perfect knowledge, mean He has he, he was never ignorant, He has a perfect knowledge. Then I say to you, you know what? God doesn't know when the day of judgment will happen. No, oh, hang on, let me see. You just told me God knows everything, everything. Then you tell me He doesn't know when the day of judgment will be established. Doesn't make any sense. So, our sound, we don't need the scripture to tell me this doesn't make any sense. When it comes to Islam, it goes in line with our sound reasoning. So, for example, Islam came to preserve five things. 
That's why Islam is very special. That's why many people accept Islam in our time, especially in the Western world. Yes? I'm going to explain to you why people accept Islam. Islam came to preserve five things. Islam came to preserve religion. What does that mean? In Islam, worshipping God alone and following his teaching according to, according to his prophet is very, very important. That's why paganism, uh, politism, atheism is forbidden. What is paganism? Yes? I'm speaking to her. I have respect. I'm speaking what to her. Paganism? Okay. So uh, that's the first thing. You worship God alone according to his teaching. Yeah. Secondly, Islam came to preserve intellect. Yeah. That's why Islam, alcohol and drugs is forbidden. Thirdly, Islam came to preserve wealth. That's why interest and gambling is forbidden. Fourthly, Islam came to preserve marriage life. That's why adultery and fornication is forbidden. Lastly, Islam came to preserve life. That's why committing suicide, killing people unjustly is forbidden. These five things Islam came to preserve, if we do preserve them, we will have a good society, a healthy society. If we do not preserve them, let us see. Alcohol, is it good for us or bad for us? Bad. Bad. Individually and collectively. Yes? Yes, some people do benefit from it. I will come to that. Now, uh, gambling, is it good for us or bad for us? Bad. Bad. Individually and collectively. Interest. Depends on which side you're on. Interest, yeah, of course. Like I said, <laughs> you're right. There are some people benefit from it. But majority of times, people who are poor have been suffered. Because what is interest? Interest, you are going through hardship and you need the money from me. Mm -hmm. So what I do, I utilize your, your hardship to manipulate you, to put you in slavery of interest. Imagine putting that on a big scale. So what I'm doing, I'm only benefiting from you and I'm utilizing you to make money from you without you even benefiting from it. Well, it depends on what you do with the money that you're getting though. No, the, like well, if you were to build a business with money that you get an interest on, then you grow it faster than the interest payments. No, but remember, it's growing. No, but listen, you know when people put in interest, they know what they're doing. You know, do you remember the 2009 credit crunch? Credit crunch 2009? Yeah. When people were buying homes they couldn't afford? What was it? Interest. That's the outcome of interest. Destroy society. Interest, what happened? Makes the poor poorer, retreacher. So it's not good for us. Because if you're in need of help, sister, what I have to do as a Muslim, Islam teach me, if your brother or sister need, they are in need of help, do not utilize the hardship to manipulate them. I will give you the money. And I said, look, give it, give it back to me when you can. And Islamic teaching, if I forgive you, it's much better. You understand? So Islam teach us what? Exactly as well. Yeah, you give it back so exactly. Think, it, there's two different kinds of taking out a loan. That's what right? the Bible yeah. also You're just teaches. taking on consumer credit. Bible consumer not, debt. Bible is not teaching something else. else. Yeah. That's different than taking out a loan so that you could like grow a business or do something of that nature. But I'm from America, so we think yeah. this way. But, but it's the same thing. But, but same, same thing. What's good? But it's same thing. Because why? What I'm saying now? Okay, for example, I have to buy a camera. Now I want to buy this. I want to buy that. Yeah, I want to build a, a, a business. But it's more like maybe. I will lose in my business. So what happened? The bank said, no problem. We're going to give you, we gave you five years. And we told you, give us back $50,000. Now you cannot give it back in five years. We give you 10 years. But guess what? Give me $150,000. But guess what? It's a risk. Maybe. So what happened? Mentally, that's why there's a lot of suicide. Because I remember there's a guy, he committed suicide because of interest. He couldn't pay back. He went bankrupt. That's why there's more harm to it. There is benefit from it, no doubt. But there's more harm, understand? Likewise, when it comes to adultery and fornication, destroy families. Why? Destroy marriages, understand? Now they done study in America and UK, majority of young people that commit uh, crimes, they come from broken houses. That's why Islam marriage is very, very important. So the point is here, how this man, Prophet Muhammad, uh, let me, before come to that. So why some people have problem with Islam, even though this legislation that Islam came with, the five things, is good for us individually, collectively, because there are some people out there who are who those who are in power. They see Islam as a threat for, for their business. They are making money from the suffering of the people. And they know if people accept Islam, they will turn away from their business and they will go bankrupt. So what they do, because they have a lot of money, they utilize their money to make Islam look bad through the media, even though Islam is good for us individually and collectively. The other thing, how a man that existed 1,400 years ago, who was unable to read and write in the middle of nowhere, he's coming with his perfect way of life. On the other hand, we have these politicians who studied in the best universities around the world, yet they cannot resolve the problems you are facing. Because that man, he's a messenger of the Most High. 
And when the Most High legislates something, there is no evil desires involved or vice. Make sense, what's that? What do you think? I do. Well, you're talking about like all these things aren't allowed. Right? What, was, what was the word? Alcohol, drugs. Yeah. So what happens when people do them? In Islam, there's punishment for it. Okay. So there's. Yeah. So, so yeah. that's. I think that's probably like the biggest difference because we start talking about a theocracy and we start talking about where things aren't allowed and it becomes a lot of oppression. Right. And people have fewer and fewer choices and they're forced to live a certain way. No, that's not true because why? In Islam now, when he said you're not allowed to fornicate, you're allowed to get married. <laughs> no, understand. But when you're allowed to, uh, sorry, sir. Uh, marriage but is only for three hours. Uh, three hours marriage, three day marriage. Is Can you have some respect for the lady who's speaking? Marriage. Okay, no, not two hours. Marriage? It's only two seconds, marriage. Uh, okay. The point here is that when Islam tells you to not have interest, where is it? Transaction, talak, business. Talak, 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 also helping people, you understand? When Islam tells you to not drink, marriage? because alcohol is bad for you. There's other things. Islam teaches you to protect your soul, protect your health. Protect your society. But so it, it, but it but, teaches us through punishment. Huh? It teaches us through punishment. Because yeah. there are some people, no, not all the time, because some people out there, nothing can stop them except by, by, by punishment. Because we have to be realistic to ourselves. We have to be honest to ourselves. How many signs everywhere, CC, it tells you on the shop, CCTV in operation, do not steal. Does people steal or not? They still steal. They still steal. So when God tells us to not steal and everything, some people they will steal. So you're causing harm. In society, so God, the most just, He will put a punishment for you. Why? To remove the to remove the greater harm from society. You understand? That's why Islamic legislation. Anyone has a problem with Islamic punishment, either they don't understand it correctly, or those who are criminals. Because when I was a criminal before I become started practicing Islam, I didn't like punishment. Why? I want Christianity teaching, but Jesus died for my sins. For example, I didn't want it, by the way, because even that didn't make sense to me. But I'm saying, if someone tell me, do whatever you like, because Jesus died for your sins, if I forget what well, I'm a human being, I have desires, understand? But Allah knows, He creates us. He knows there's certain human beings, nothing can stop them except punishment. But certain human beings... So why did, yes. God, why did Allah then create us that wants to sin? God wants to punish huh? you every time. But, but man wants to sin. God wants to sin. Right? We see it all around us. People break laws, even though people Yeah, but know. that's what Allah forgives. So He forgives. Okay, he but forgives. I'm just saying, like, with the creation, what is the point of us coming here and all is planned with the desire to sin? Okay. So what is that? It's I mean, a test for us. So that desire God gave you, God gave us, look, God did create angels, okay? With the intellect, but with not desires, all right? God created demon with desires, as I say, not intellect. But God created us with intellect and desires. So. If you are a wise person, you utilize your intellect to control your desires. So Allah told us it's a test. And it makes sense why He created us with desires to sin, because he, He's going to test us. In order to test you, He has to give you that free will and that desires for you to, to sin or not. But He never forced you. You understand? Wait, wait, wait. So, God, sorry, so Allah created angels, yeah. man, angels? Man, yeah, man yeah. and demons. Which you call jinn? Yeah, we call it them. Okay. So why did He create all three? And what is the difference in as far as my destiny in Allah's plan as compared to an angel to, or compared to To be an honest, angel? you know, I have respect. Now, certain question will not benefit me. Like, for example, if I don't know what Allah created angel, that is not going to benefit me from Allah. You understand? For example, when you go to university, there's no conditional for you to know why the bathroom in the first floor, not in the second floor. That is not going to help you. Why is it going to help you if you study and pass the test? That's what university. So you have to understand. We know, for example, Allah created the angels to follow his order, you know, to worship him. He created, he created many different creations, you understand? Even Christianity, same thing. In Judaism, same thing. The point here is to go back to, I think we digress a bit, that when it comes to Islamic legislation, any person with a sound reasoning reflects upon it, you will know this Muhammad, Prophet Muhammad, he must be a messenger, alayhi salatu wasalam. He must be the messenger of the Most High. Because whatever Islam tells you to stay away from, is bad for you. Tell me something Islam tells you to stay away from, and it's not bad for you. Tell me. Oh, I don't, I don't know. The five things I mentioned. No, the five course. things I mentioned. Sorry to cut you, sister. Yeah? I know I'm speaking a lot. You know, the, the, the five things I mentioned. Wallah, in Islam, you know, there's a principle in Islam. Islam came, the Prophet Muhammad came with the legislation, either to remove the harm or the evil completely, or to decrease the evil. That's the Islamic principle. For example, if I see people, if I see people smoking drugs, sitting down smoking drugs, if I know, if I know for sure, if I tell them stop smoking drugs, 
do go something, they will go start killing people. I will not do it. Why? Because there's two harms here. There's greater harm and lesser harm. Smoking drugs is a lesser harm. But if I tell them stop smoking drugs, because I'm sitting down, getting high, but if I tell them stop, go somewhere, they start killing people, then I have to look at which, if I'm going to cause greater evil or lesser evil. If I'm able to remove the both evils, then I do it. So Islam, this, this, the principles of Islam, that's why we say Islam is valid for every place and every time. Because Islam is based upon universal principles. You understand? So there's like, for example, abortion. Yeah? Ab abortion. Islam, abortion is haram, forbidden. Yeah? But now, if we know for a fact that the doctors, they say to women, for a fact that you're going to have a baby, you're going to die. Yeah? You're going to die. You're going to... For a fact, Islam looks too evil. Abortion is evil, but there's great evil had dying. So Islam, as Kola said before, it becomes a normal human being. You can commit the abortion. You understand? For example, some women get raped, forcibly being raped, you know, and mentally, if she has a child, she will probably kill him. You understand? So Islam comes in, there's two evils here. That's why the Islam, like I said, these principles, we can apply it to every place. That's why Islam, Islamic teaching is valid in Europe and other than Europe. You understand? Because it's perfect for mankind. But when it comes to Christianity, Christianity is not the case. That's why Europe turned away from Christianity. <laughs> America turned away from Christianity. And why? Also, Sorry, I have so, to talk no, no, too much. We, we, we're no, no, talking about the, the, yeah. the natural innate disposition of Fitrah. So yeah. maybe, as, as I said to you guys originally, uh, before, we, all, we believe children are born as Muslims. Elaborate that. Okay. Yeah, before I come to that, yeah, yeah. I want something to mention. When you look to the Western world, the Western world came to Africa and forced Christianity on many people. Yes? The same people who came and forced it on us, themselves, they turned away from it. Completely turned away from it. Understand? That's why, you know, when you, because why I have respect, I'm not trying to disrespect you, but when you look to Christianity teaching, there is no legislation, there is no punishment for the criminals. Jesus died for your sins, do whatever you want to do. But Islam comes in, yes, if you commit sin and you turn away from it and, I, and you ask Allah forgiveness, Allah will forgive you. But there's two rights sometimes. There's God's right and the human's right. Imagine I took your phone. That's a sin. I have stolen your phone. I, I'm good against Allah. Now I say, oh Allah, forgive me. But there's one thing I have to do. Give your phone back to you. Because, okay, Allah will forgive me. But in order for my repentance to be completed, I have to give your right back to you because that is your right. You understand? So when you look to Islam, that yes, some people can forgive them, but some people, they will never stop. ISIS. When ISIS came around, how many countries tried to, try to negotiate with them? Many countries stopped doing what you're doing, stopped forcing people. They were not listening. Then the countries came together. They said the only solution with this evil one, because they're killing innocent people, is to wage a war against them. That's what is in Islam. You know, in Islam, there's a war. No doubt about it. There is verse about war. But that war is a praiseworthy war. That war was legislated to remove oppression and harm and guess the innocent people. See if we can give. I was going to add one thing. Go ahead. So, we live in Texas. Texas, man. The Bible back. So, the Christians are still willing to punish in Texas. Yeah. They still think that people need to be punished. It's I not mean, forgiving everybody in Texas. Yeah. But I'm saying the Christians don't follow the Old Testament anymore. Most don't. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. But in Texas. Yeah, Texas is a special <laughs> one. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But the point here is, I mentioned, but the most important thing is that worshiping God alone. In Christianity, you don't have that. Christianity, you believe in Jesus. So you, worship, you believe Jesus is God, huh? I'm not sure. Ah, okay. So uh, in Christianity, even about worshiping God, worshiping God according to the Bible, we cannot verify. There's many information we cannot verify. Rather, there is some information in the Old Testament is being taken from paganism. Should I give you an example? Example of that, you know, do you know how the languages came about? How we start speaking different language? The Tower of Babel. That's it. The Babylon, yeah? They were speaking. So God looked upon the earth and he saw people speaking one language. Yes? And they will start building tall buildings. He said, nothing can stop them now. So he came down, or the angels came down, and he caused confusion to not speak one language. If you trace back his teaching, it was the, the, the belief of the pagans before. The pagans, they used to believe if you build tall buildings, you'll be able to reach God and you overthrow God. But we know now, regardless of how tall, 
how you uh, how uh, uh, how high you're going to build the building you will never be able to reach god and god doesn't matter if you speak one language or not that will not worry god that's why in the quranic and islamic teaching we have allah mentioned all mankind and even the demon if all of you have the most evil hearts the most evil heart if all of you have it that will not harm me and if all of you mankind and the jinn you have the most righteous heart the most good heart that will not benefit me either you're going to benefit yourself or harm yourself so god that is worried about people speaking one language and is worried that he's speaking building doesn't make any sense to me at all likewise god that says to in the bible kill a babies and infants because something happened 500 years ago doesn't make any sense to me in islam allah mentioned La taziru waziratun wazir al-ukhra. You should be not, is your son, yeah? Yeah. You should be not responsible for your son's sins. Likewise, he should. Imagine you do something evil to me. I'm not allowed to go harm your son because it has nothing to do with you. It has nothing to do with it, you understand? That's why we, we, when we warn Angus ISIS, when they go to America or come to Europe, kill innocent people, they go clearly Angus Islamic teaching. Islam teach me that if you try to harm me, I'm not going to harm your wife or your son. You have me, so it's you. Either I forgive you, which is highly recommend the Quran, who can take my right back? Understand? So my point here is, there's many teachings in the Bible, it doesn't make any sense. Killing babies and children, infants, slaughter them alive, because something. Likewise, when it comes to a prophetic teaching, Prophet Muhammad, he prophesies many things. He said there will come a time when you see the barefoot Arab man, the bare, specific, the barefoot Arab man, compete in building tall buildings competing bear in mind when the prophet muhammad mentioned that back in those days the arabs were not known to build tall buildings let me ask you now maybe you know where is the tallest building in the world i know it's in dubai it's in dubai that's why i start laughing because you know it it's in dubai dubai 20 years ago was a pure desert let alone 1400 years ago the question how a man that existed 1400 years ago who is unable to read and write prophesizing about something in detail specifically prophet muhammad mentioned about interest he said there will come a time alayhi salatu wasalam let me explain to you what is the meaning of alayhi salatu wasalam is arabic term mean oh allah shower him with your blessings and mercy so every time even when we when we mention jesus out of respect we say oh allah bless him you know and show, show mercy out of respect you know so um, he said there will come a time when interest will become widespread even if you are not involved directly it will affect you but now by default if you open a bank account you are involved in interest your money has been used how a man that existed 1400 years ago is able to prophesy about something in the quran allah mentioned that satan will inspire people to change allah's creation it's in the quran 1400 years ago what's happening now transgender man change into be like a woman woman is been mentioned in the quran 1400 years ago what's your what's your opinion on that no. uh, it is a sin in islam we believe it's a sin is uh, i guess god's teaching you know of course we are I always mention because some people try to claim it is a sin i believe that's uh, uh, uh let me give you an example to understand imagine yeah. guys i said to you watch this imagine guys i said to you look i be, even though i have an arm you have to go how much time i have Soon. Okay, even me, I have to go soon. I have eight party. I have to go as well. You know, but I, this is the last one, inshallah. Imagine I said to you guys, I believe I'm armless. I have no arm. Even though clearly you can see I have an arm. Yes, clearly. But I feel I should have born without an arm and I'm armless. Would you help me to cut it off? Of course no. not. Say, Brother Shamsi, no, 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 what are you doing? My name is Shamsi. So, Shamsi, what are you doing? No, no, no. What about someone cutting off everything? Because it feels like it. You know what's happening now? Allah mentioned the Quran. Women are the and decree for in Nelahu Maishan Lanka. Whoever turns away from my remembrance, he will have a miserable life. What we see now, what's happening is going crazy. You know, and it doesn't mean because I feel something, I have to implement it. Because remember, there's a Satan, there is a whispering. Doesn't mean because I feel I want to beat up my wife, I go do it. Or my mother, no, say no, hold on, this is from the devil. Understand? But, like I said, now there is a war against human nature. And the only religion that is standing firm against it is Islam. That's why there is a huge war against Islam. That's why on the media, day and night, America, 
Australia, Europe, everywhere, always there is bad news about Islam. Why? Because people know, those in power know, the only religion that will save people from this destruction that is coming to us is Islam. That's why there's a huge war against it. And guess what Allah mentioned in the Quran again, 1,400 years ago. Allah mentioned the Quran, هو الذي أرسل رسوله بالهدى. It's Allah who sent his prophet Muhammad with Islam, guidance. ليظهره على الدين كله in order for Islam to prevail other religions. ولو كره المشركون. Even if the politicians dislike it. Now there is many barriers against Islam. Our opponents, they have more uh, material, more powerful uh, material against Islam, but yet the fastest growing religion in the Western world is Islam. Who is doing the job? The most high. Inshallah. All right, thank you. I like that. Thank you. You're welcome, inshallah. This is a gift for you. We have one. We have. You have one, khalas. All right. We got one in Turkey. How much? Uh, you want to take it? Would you uh, like to take it? Yeah. I would like to. Oh, yeah, take it, take it, take it, take it. But what, 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 what translation is it? What translation? English. Of course, not Chinese. I know it's English. They, they, they speak English, they don't speak Chinese. No, but what Chinese? Let me see just one thing. No, no, this is your word. Yeah, the noble Quran. Yeah, this is Quran. It's a good translation. You see my point here? Just before you go. You know, when you have Quran translation, we can verify the translation because we still have the original writing. But when it comes to Bible, we don't have it. But thank you for giving me your time. No, I appreciate it. And uh, hopefully I'll see you soon, inshallah. Thank take you care of yourself. Much, take you know? care, yeah, take care, man. Have a nice holiday. You know? I have to go to my eat party now. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> where you are? I'm here. <laughs> What's coming here, son? Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. Come to you for you. Oh, smell for Yeah. He's nice. I tell you. Yeah, come on, come on. Barakul Walda, Mata to Allah. الله سلطان خطيب الله امتحانات من عند الله ثباتكم الله بس اريدك شو تسوي ما ماتك اكتب لك شيء على اليد ان شاء الله يتفتح الدعاء اي دعاء يوم خطيه عمرها 80 سنه اقول لك لو شوفوا شلون تخاف من الله تبكي 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 سبحان الله ما تتبى اربي عند الكرام الله رحم الله وغفر لها والله اشتاق لك شمسي جاني انت ترسل لي رسائل اي ادزك ادزك ان شاء الله الله ان شاء الله يجعل من اهل الفردوس بارك الله لكن اخي ابو اروح انا اخويا السلام عليكم كيف الحال لباس عيد مبارك اغلى منكم فيكم خير بارك الله فيك ما شاء الله. And I bring this verses they brought up to help prove it. Then the new messenger may come, you know. And the prove it. Yeah. Yeah, because I met everybody. Hello. Ask you are going to